Wars American Arms, SHOT Show 2012. This is Nutt and Fancy at the table with Mr. Sean. How you doing? Super. Kenny, hello. How's it going? What's your jobs at North American Arms? I'm his executive assistant. <laughs> I'm the sales manager for the company. Sean is just a really good friend down to exhibit here. Just helps out here at the show. And I will say this right now, on camera, this guy's responsible for this booth review. He grabbed me, saw me booking across the SHOT Show. He's like, hey man, North American Arms, any interest? And actually, I do have interest. Yeah, yeah, awesome. But I was on en route to another booth review, and I was like, I gotta make some time for North American, because you guys I, have some awesome guns. I should have known to see you at Arsenal. Every year, <laughs> I, we always have the Arsenal review. I wasn't gonna do Arsenal this year either, and I was like, ah, Walker talked to him. He's like, oh, come on, do a booth review. And I was like, ah, I don't want to. And anyways, long story, we did it, and it was a great review. Yeah, good. Here we are with you, though. Absolutely. Forget Arsenal. Let's talk about North American Arms. North American Arms, Provo, Utah. Can I kick us off with a gun? I looked in your counter and I was just going off stuff I liked. Check this one out, guys. Yeah. Isn't that a cool looking gun? I love, you said you're experimenting with different finishes. Now. Absolutely, that's one of the things we're moving into. We've got a, uh, a titanium coated black one we did for the Taylor distributors. We've also got a, a blued gun and a gold plated one as well. Nice. In case Harding's the next step. That's a big win. I love that gun. Uh, you guys might be surprised, you know, me being so tactical. Uh, I actually love some old traditional stuff, but I have a very particular taste along those lines. It has to look good. I like the gray barrel on this. Had you gone with a stainless barrel, uh, kind of would have clashed a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we definitely wanted to have something match, and we're not sure that that's the way the barrel will finish up, but like I said, that was handed to me two days before we came down so here. So this is new, new. New, new. And it looks like the show Nazis got a hold of you, you have to put plugs in all these. Absolutely, apparently. and snap the hammer blades off just to make sure that no one yeah. does something stupid. Well, we're saying that, maybe that's a good thing, uh, I don't We know. appreciate everything the NSSF guys Yeah, do. they're great, they're putting on a great show this year. Uh, and go ahead, you take it away. I just want to show you that one. We have a lot of guns on the table. Quick sweep. Hit absolutely, it. absolutely. So basically what we do in North American Arms, we're mini, 22 caliber mini revolvers. We do them in short, long rifle, and 22 magnum. Uh, 22 short right here. Five shots, single action. Tiny. Rock like that. This is the small, the smallest handgun that shoots commercially available ammo in the world. It has been for years, right? Absolutely, absolutely. What we see in the philosophy of use, we're talking about philosophy of use with this. And we ran into someone that shot already. I forget if it was Rob Latham or whoever it was. No, it was uh, Angus Hobdell from uh, CZ USA. He carries one of these. Uh, I think a 22 long rifle, maybe it's 22 mag, but he has his carry gun and then he has a North American tucked in by his money because they're so small, they're so compact. Absolutely. It's easy to layer your personal protection with one of these. No, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We, we, we never say this is the first gun you want to bring to a gunfight, but we say it is infinitely better than nothing at all. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Uh, it's a gun you will have. Yeah. And honestly, and I'm going to show a different version. Where's your 22 long rifle? 22 on? long rifle right here, sir. Okay. And you need to practice with these guns. Absolutely. You know, to be good with them. I have shot these before. I enjoy shooting them. They're fun to shoot. They're hard to shoot fast and accurately, though. They're a single action, so you're cocking for every shot. Uh, the 22 long rifle is probably my favorite. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but the 22 Magnum, ballistically speaking, here's a 22 Magnum, right? Yeah, that's our pug model. 22 that's Magnum. cool. Check that out. It's gonna be kind of like a 22 long rifle out of a longer barrel, ballistically speaking, out of this size of barrel. Sure, absolutely. It, you're not gonna burn all the powder in that long 22 mag case, but you're, you are you are gonna get something. Absolutely. And it's gonna be better than a 22 long rifle. Absolutely. Um, so there you go, out of the same barrel length that I'm talking. Perfect. Love it. Well, what about that pug? It's got an under barrel weight or something Well, on what it? that is, that's actually a different style of the cylinder pin. It's like our Black Widow and our Mini Master Shut models. Up. What you do is you twist or pull that down to spring loaded and it twists and slides right out. Shut up. Just like that. And it's I just like a different that. design, just meant to look mean. Very popular with the law enforcement people. When I uh, when I throw something in my pocket, I throw the pug in. It's got a flat top strap on it. Exactly. <laughs> it's just cool. It's what? Plus it's got, got a tritium dot on the front? Excess uh, <laughs> provides white dot and tritium for <laughs> our pugs. Cool. Absolutely. That is cool. Weight on that, I don't know. They're cataloged here. We can look it up. It's not that heavy. It's not. And look at the, does Hogue make I believe that, that is Hogue. I might be misspeaking if I am. am. That is a cool gun. Absolutely. I wouldn't mind carrying that around, but for the weight, I'd honestly have to take a real close look at it. It, would I carry a subcompact auto like a Brett or something? I don't know. Sure. No, I really I, like that though. That's a cool gun. Tritium dot on the front. Absolutely. That's a pug. Or then you'll always have that available. 
Is this one? This, this is, is a 22 some, mag. This is another version of our 22 mag. Uh, besides finishes, the other thing we were experimenting is ways to kind of soup up the standard 22 mag. Our standard 22 mag looks a lot like the long rifle, only bigger. So what we did with this is we uh, we implemented some designs on the ridges, the cylinder pin, some venting, uh, a different sight, and a skeletonized hammer. Uh, just for some fun. It looks great. Absolutely. Love we'll call it. that the wasp. It's just a good looking gun. This is lighter than your pug just because, uh, just slightly. There's just a lot slightly. of there's a lot of metal in that pug. Yeah. Uh, it depends on what you want. I ha have you guys, I know you have, because uh, you say you carry one. The pug versus shooting this one, any difference in shooting dynamics and shot recovery? Are they all basically They're the same? They're all basically the same. This is going to be a little bit snappy. Yeah. Especially with 22 mag. Absolutely. How about you, Sean? What do you carry? Uh, SIG, uh, I currently have a SIG 226. I have a Keltec LCP as well. Okay. The, uh, as far as these, I like the, uh, like the pug. The pug is your choice yeah. then, on yeah. the table here? Yes. Yeah. Wicked. Okay, it's 22 long rifle, 22 mags right here. Absolutely. The 22 short is just cool. Isn't that cool? Here it is in the catalog. It's just cool. Ballistically, I would think, I wonder how many foot pounds of energy you're putting out out of that barrel. I wouldn't know offhand. I wouldn't either off the top of my head. Like you said though, man, it's better than no gun. Absolutely. Look at this one right here. That's part of our Earl variation. We do that in a two and a half, three inch, four inch, and this is our new six inch hog leg model. It's meant to look like the 1858 Remington. Uh, it is a cartridge gun, but we do make it in a couple of black powder versions as well. Isn't that funny though? Because Okay, how do I load this? Is this my cylinder release right here, but it's meant to look like the charging handle Absolutely. of a black powder all of, of the 1858? It's all cosmetic. It's just Isn't meant to retain the cylinder cool. pin. The cylinder pin pulls out and the cylinder drops free. So you could buy extra cylinders when you go plinking with this thing. Yep. And, and all of our Magnum models, we have a 22 caliber or 22 long rifle right. version cylinder, so you can shoot 22 long rifles out of the Magnums. I love that gun. It's got really good sights on it. Here is the, That's the four, inch, four inch, inch barrel drawn one. Let me show you the sights on this. Let me go against the black here, guys, so you can see. This is a North American Arms four inch barrel. What was the name of it again? We call it the Earl. The Named Earl. after the designer. He's not, he's not with us anymore. There's so much for the company. Rest his soul. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, that is a very cool gun. Kind of a second kind of cool, fun plinker. But it has a long enough sight radius, you can probably hit something with it. Absolutely. People have actually come up and tell us that they shoot out of the Earl or the Blackwood on the Mini Master. They do end up getting a lot of really good uh, groupings. Really? Surprising. Have you guys shot it a lot? Just a little bit? Just a little bit in test fire, but not out on the it? range, yeah. I think it'd be a blast. That'd be a fun little gun. Fun gun. Uh, are you, they selling well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, based on the, the cosmetics of it, it it's, it's for a certain type of person. But absolutely, they are selling well. Maybe they'll sell a little better now that the world knows about it. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears, sir. Uh, I'm just saying, I love it. I love it. And between these two guys, which one would you think I would like best? Ooh. Sean, which would you say? Uh, barrel length wise. I dig the six inch. That's me, well, baby. I dig, I dig the six inch. Absolutely. Velocity. Well, see, because I'm already going for, I have, you know, sights, velocity, so I'm getting the max velocity I yeah. can out of the cartridge. It's going to be kind of a target pistol. It's just a recreational pistol. Yeah. What else are you going to do with it? You might as well go with a long barrel. Yeah. I exactly. would love this one too, but this is going to be max accuracy, max sight radius. Exactly. Six, six inch. And the grip holster. Oh, yeah. One of the other things that we, uh, we do. Because you, you spoke about how the gun's gonna rock in your hand when you shoot it, we've come up with a, I believe, I don't remember who makes this first, I believe this is Hogue as well, but. Is that the Black Widow? This is just a standard 22 Magnum, but oh, it will okay. fit on the Black Widow, okay. the Pug, or any of our Magnums. Mm -hmm. we call this the holster grip, folds up, folds out in a full-sized uh, grip like that, you're ready to roll. Clip is ambidextrous, so you can go righty or lefty on it. Folds up just like Let's that. Check that out. Gives you a lot better purchase. Absolutely. Yeah. And throw it in your uh, your jeans pocket. It looks pretty much like a, a just a bulky knife. Or a cell phone. Even. Or a cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would never even think. Well, me being who I am, <laughs> right. I would think twice. But most people would not. Yeah, I only that hanging out. The I, I saw an, uh, an off-duty police officer at, the, at, U, at UVU right. walking around with it, and I was like, ah. Busted. Hey, you're you welcome. like that horse holster grip? You're welcome. Yeah. We, we built that for you, Mr. <laughs> police Officer. What in the heck? Look at this thing right here. Ah, laser. Our buddies at Laser Light came that up with a nice so little funny. laser for us. Mounts on the top there. They even have a battery on it. Good for you. I can't tell you how many times we're at shot. We try to see and the batteries are dead. We've uh, made yeah, sure yeah. that all of our products work that way. I'd have to shoot that to see how useful it is. Uh, it's been a while since I've shot your guns. It's been a long time, so I, I can kind of remember uh, the sights are actually 
you know, workable. Yeah, absolutely. Off the tiny guns, they are actually workable. Now, how you're going to hold it? Are you checking out some hot chicken? Oh, uh, we probably, have been. probably, probably, yeah. probably. Yeah. Okay, at ten cool points then. <laughs> Back to the guns. <laughs> Holding the gun, you know, steady enough to connect. That's your issue as a shooter. Your marksmanship. How you're going to manipulate the trigger? Absolutely. Uh, but the sights are actually decent. I'd have to shoot that laser light. It is right. very cool. What I what I what I believe it brings to the table is it actually it helps at least focus people because they are already a little apprehensive about how that sight picture and what what they're going to get out of it so i think it helps focus a lot of people into seeing something that's already on the paper that's you know it'd be cool is if you somehow integrated a rail on this so you could put it under barrel so i still have iron sights funny you should mention that really uh, i think sean's trying to grab it right now laser light right there's here. the president of the company right there by the way sandy she's a man sandy Working with this good customer. Uh, laser light, and we'll show you a little bit of a prototype that we're working on. And I, no, I did not make this up. I was just like, this is something I, I would that. like to see on the north. Did I even mention it to you no, prior? Sir. Not at all. It's all cold turkey. Are what? we play, playing with a little ta something a little more tactical, quote unquote? Yeah. Tactical uh, exactly. cowboy. So what laser That's what light? You call it, Sean. Yes. The tactical cowboy. Uh, what laser light has gone ahead and done is <laughs> integrate. A, uh, a laser into that's the exactly cylinder pin. That's what I was talking about right Just here, like dude. that. So, Perfect. that's still in prototype stage. Yeah, you're developing, developing it. Because now I still have my iron sights. I'm not losing those iron sights. And, you know, if I want to play around with the laser or do, honestly, we're kidding around with the laser, but to intimidate a bad guy so I don't have to shoot him. Say, hey, dude, check the dot out on your chest. Absolutely. I'm just saying, please go somewhere else. Yeah, lasers have a function. always an option. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. So it's funny you mentioned that. So. Well played. Well played. Absolutely. Here we go. That's Black Widow, isn't it? Black Widow, absolutely. And, and speaking of prototypes, sitting in a, a nice little DeSantis holster that we're hoping to be bringing out in the next month or so. They brought that to us. Okay, so you guys who have the Black Widows out there, you want a conventional carry, there's a leather option on the drawing boards coming out soon. And it's absolutely a beautiful piece. With the Black Widow, just like the Pug, only difference is, is these uh, these millet front sights there. I love that gun. I think it's cool. You know, again, I look real closely at my weight and semi-automatic mm -hmm. capability. So, you know, if I'm going for first type of pull. And then on to Guardian. Guardian. 380. Hate this gun. Hate <laughs> it. Perfectly fine. It's just, you know, when it came out, I was really excited. But things, and you defend it. You guys weigh in if there's something you want to say in defense of it. Help mm -hmm. yourself. When it came out, I was, I was stoked to see Kim, and you were one of the first to the table with a subcompact. Absolutely. If I remember right, uh, AMT was making a 380, uh, Beretta Cougar was out at the time, and then the North American Arms Guardian came out, and it hit big. Yeah. It was actually a big seller, but it's not light, and it's thick, and the sights are tiny. I know a lot of guys say it's not meant to, it's a belly gun. Thoughts, go. Absolutely. Well, the weight, I understand, the and there's the 32 in the gold and grayed model. I understand that people's concern about the weight. What I say to that is there still are a lot of people out there that want to shoot something that is 17-4 stainless. They like something that's still made of metal. Uh, the weight does help deal a little bit with the recoil. When Shot recovery. When you're shooting with these plastic guns, you have a little bit of a problem trying to get, you know, like I said, recover from your shots. Uh, on top of that, it's just a 17-4 stainless that is well made. It's going to last you. And all of our guns have a lifetime warranty on them, so you're never going to have a problem. And you guys mill these in Taiwan, right? And it's Absolutely not. Put your name on them. Provo, Utah, USA, baby. <laughs> I'm kidding. Every gun on the table, 100% USA, baby. 100%. Everything. I've seen Absolutely. it with my eyes. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm messing around, of course. Uh, how's the reliability on this? I've heard mostly good. Absolutely. Mostly good, but honestly, you can say that about every 380 out there. It's every gun's going to have. Good. Yeah, every gun's going to have its hiccups. Uh, they're very seldom. These guns are designed to chew any ammo you want to put into them. Uh, five plus one or six plus one? I six plus one. Six plus one. Heel catch. No, you got a, a thumb release magazine on site. Absolutely. That's the Guardian. Uh, price point on that. <laughs> that's the other deterrence is this roughly about 400 bucks yeah that's probably what's sinking you there a little I, bit I would think the bread so. is expensive yeah. the bread is still making their 380 and i still think it's expensive but there's a market out there Absolutely. but the competition's fierce in the world of 380 you've got polymer guns the lcp and you also like have you're carrying yeah yeah Busted, well mine's uh by the way p380 sorry yeah. oh p380 uh, Caltech. you're gonna bleep out one DL. no totally <laughs> not doing that <laughs> <laughs> um, but also you have the 32 NAA available. No. Shoots out of the, it's the same frame as the 380, the only difference being the size of the hole in the barrel. It's a 380 caliber neck down to a 32. 
have okay, more that water. sounds intriguing because yeah, you're gonna have some more velocity. It's a light cooking. round, but it's but it's coming out. Wicked It'll dominate fast. the 32 ACP we're in ballistics, getting, right? We're getting about 1,200 feet per second out of standard box from Portland. Okay, here's another thing I'd like to see you guys do. You're doing great on the laser light thing, by the way. Come out with a competition, three a uh, subcompact nine millimeter. I'll pass it on to the engineers. Okay, and what I want you to do is compete against the 938 SIG that just came out of shot. Walk down to the booth review, go look at it, beat it. I'd love to. I didn't even know they had something new. I love 938, it's going to be a huge win for SIG. They're not even going to keep them in stock. It's a 1911 subcompact, very thin. I'd love to see a North American Arms interpretation of that. So just basically sizing up the uh, their Colt Mustang. Sure. Out, they are. Alloy frame, you better make it reliable. If it chokes, it's going to fall flat. But do it, do the tritium night sights. Or actually, I like precision sights, but you can do the tritium night sights on it okay. with your attention to detail and the quality levels we're looking at right here on the table. I'll take the idea back. Yeah. We'll, we'll play with do it. Do it. 9mm single stock, 1911. That should be easy to do with the CNC capabilities you guys got. Oh, yeah. I should say easy. Every gun's tough to make right and, and make it reliable and all that stuff. Absolutely. All right, on the table, wrapping it up here, North American Arms. Favorite guns, TMPers. These right here, I love them. The classics. These classics are just... Second type of cool. Second type of cool. And actually, first type of cool, because look at how small they are. Absolutely. This is uh, probably my overall favorite on the table right now. That one, these two, and I love the classics. The Black Widows, these are all wins. A little bit chilled on the Guardian. Whatever. You yeah, what are you going to do? It we is said that is. off camera. I said, dude, I'm not going to hold back. And you're like, ah, we don't care. Yeah, it is what it is. We it is what it is. For different people. Great product. So thank you guys so much. Did I miss anything? Anything uh, you want to talk about? The belt buckle. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, the belt buckle. Here we go. Yeah, wear that around. Wear In that Utah, through. you can wear it around. That's right. Don't leave me hanging, man. Absolutely. That's how we do. Guys, I tell you, Arizona, Wyoming, Utah, great, great gun states. Absolutely. Nevada. Nevada's a great gun state. Well, we don't have reciprocity anymore, but... Oh, yeah, that sucks. Then there's that. Sad. Then there's that. So we'll leave on a sad note <laughs> for Speaking reciprocity. Of, there's a the laser light, guys, right now. Right on, man. We'll say hi to them off camera. I'm going to end it now. That's North American Arms, the Nut and Fancy Project, checking out their lineup. Good job, guys. Great guns. Thank you very much. Thank See you. ya.